Watch us on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast and support us on Patreon. Thanks for stopping by. Such authors are often very eager to trace the history of traditionally stabilized items, such as proverbs, back to a primal moment when they happened for the first time, running on the mythological fuel of the character who says it, and where it is possible to listen in as a proverb is coined and achieves currency. Following traditional forms back to the world of their originating mothers and fathers happens to be a reflexive preoccupation not only of the early and medieval literary traditions that self-consciously grew out of and alongside oral tradition. The desire to recover that primal conception still informing an ongoing process also underlies the efforts of folklorists and other toilers in the field of oral tradition studies. With his pioneering historical and bibliographical work John has set out for posterity the fruits of these studies in all their diversity and richness, making it all the more possible for us to appreciate both the deep roots in the past and the expanding future of scholarship on oral composition, performance, and transmission. On another front, we have gained immeasurably from the comparative work John has done on the authorizing strategy familiar to us from pre-modern literatures and fieldwork reports, the syndrome whereby a tradition attributes a text, or a storyteller, or performer attributes all part or part of his her repertoire, to a spatially or temporally distant mentor. As a Celticist, I cannot resist mentioning in this regard the scenario attested in both medieval Irish literature and conversations collectors have had with Gaelic storytellers whereby the aged Shanachi expresses regret that the scholar in search of traditional material had not come to interview him before his memory had grown rusty or in time to speak with another tradition bearer, even more knowledgeable than the Shanachi, but no longer alive. Having invoked one kind of deferral topos, I now resort to another, the application of which John's unusual productivity amply justifies. Where can one start to account for all that he has done for oral tradition studies? John has overcome disciplinary and linguistic boundaries and led us into previously unknown territory dramatically expanding our sense of the range of living laboratories in which the investigation of epic, ballad, lament, and other living genres of oral performance can be productively conducted. Crisscrossing the globe in his academic travels, contributing his research and ideas to fora dizzying in the variety of their locations and disciplinary foci and creating an international journal that showcases the work of scholars so diverse that nowhere else would one expect to find their names listed in the same table of contents, John has laid the foundation for a network binding together a vast community of scholars. Were it not for their having met John and many of them in the context of summer seminars he has organized, being welcomed into this extended scholarly family he has helped to create and crossing over the now virtual bridge of oral tradition and its founding editor have provided, many far-flung researchers, thinkers, and innovators might never have realized that they have true soulmates who share their scholarly interests and goals, both as a thoughtful reader over the years of the myriad submissions that have appeared in the mailbox of oral tradition, and as a researcher restlessly seeking new subject matter, John, can see the familiar and the orderly appearing on the horizon of our scholarly vision, in data that other editors might have found alien, obscure, or even downright threatening. Moreover, as a conference organizer of the first order, and a frequent invitee, and regular participant at the yearly meetings and congresses of organizations such as the Modern Language Association, the American Folklore Society, and the Medieval Institute of Western Michigan University, John knows how to bring people on different sides of various issues together in a friendly and stimulating environment, so that they end up talking freely to each other and leaving with a commitment to stay in touch. Moreover, both under the auspices of the Center for Studies in Oral Tradition, founded by John at the University of Missouri-Columbia, as well as in less formal settings, 
John has demonstrated time, and again that he and his wonderful better half Anne-Marie, are experts in making guests feel welcome, and giving them a very good time they are not likely to forget. John can certainly write. His natural gift for expression, and his admirable resistance to indulging in the chronic academic habit of complicating one's writing or thinking for complications sake have helped to create a body of work that conveys a whole world of ideas, methods, and information, and will continue to do so for generations of scholars, students, and readers to come. As anyone who has sampled the extensive body of John's publication can attest, there is so much more in his letters, than the perfunctory academic exercise, or the bald statement of supposed fact. We thank John Foley for having so eloquently, and graciously taught us these same truths, and expanded upon them so creatively in his writings, in his teaching, and in all his exercises of a word power. For John Miles Foley, Oral tradition has always been about the journey for scholars and teachers as well as for verbal artists, and their audiences, and as he himself puts it in imminent art, long journeys are also the most pleasant, and the most rewarding. The important role of such travel is perhaps referred to most explicitly in his recent work, The Pathways Project, which through its very title explores the thought technologies of oral tradition and electronic communication as complex navigation systems with infinitely variable routes. However, the metaphor of a journey to conceptualize scholarly work, and even the verbal arts we study never static, always in motion, has characterized his work for decades, scholarship itself a journey, and John Foley's earliest goals for extending this path were, cast in terms of a road for travel, I hope to have succeeded in telling the tale bravo, straightforwardly, and not crevo crookedly, falsely, as the South Slavic Guslari would say, later, as part of his unceasing effort to pave the way for oral traditions to be studied more readily in the classroom, he envisioned his edited teaching oral traditions volume as an avenue into the study of oral traditions, and of course, even the storytellers themselves can be understood in terms of their narrative voyage, such as is the case for the ancient Greek bard who navigates through the maze of traditional story. Seldom do the students of any given scholar work in such a wide array of fields, and one might well wonder how a single mentor could inspire and influence research across such a diverse range of subjects. But as a starting point for understanding this phenomenon, it seems best to begin by turning toward a pair of traditions held most dear by John himself. John's success in facilitating successful journeys, both for himself and for his students that derives in large part from his refusal to follow convention purely for convention's sake, a decision made quite apparent in imminent art. I now declare my independence for better or for worse, from any of the modern critical schools, despite the price. One has to pay for non-alignment. Further departures from scholarly norms soon followed, both in his bringing together of unlikely comparanda within singer of tales in performance, because the contexts that lie outside the received version or text are most certainly active and crucially important, and in his choice to bridge the gap between academic scholarship and a general readership in how to read an oral poem through the utilization of a more readable style, if in championing the cause of the non-specialist. Similarly, the Pathways project was described from its outset as the provocation, not a solution that follows its own credo or responses a node. Accordingly, John Foley has also long found it necessary to remind his students and his readers that the study of verbal art has, unfortunately, often been more akin to warfare than to dialogue. Noting the etymological connection between canon and canon, he astutely observed early on that canon has come to designate a battlefield, an intellectual fortress under siege, a primary site for cultural combat, at the heart of the battle, but refusing to accept its polarizing terms, Foley removes the entire question away from the battlefield of the canon, comparing oral tradition instead to Proterse, who exists only in his shapeshifting, and resists the captivity of canonical form. As he explains in traditional oral epic, 
The danger involved with broad comparative studies is a risk occasionally worth taking but only when it involves honest appraisal of differences as well as similarities. We mustn't press the connection too far. At this juncture, then, we are compelled to turn to another tradition held dear by John, that of Old English poetry. Poetically affirming the mutual enrichment of open dialogue, Maxim's eye opens with the sage assertion that wise men shall exchange gied, jide signaling, in Foley's words, the nexus of song and wisdom. And it is just such exchanges of songs and wisdom that he himself has helped to facilitate by establishing and directing the center for studies in oral tradition which has served for more 25 years to foster conversations and exchanges about oral tradition that would not otherwise take place. John further sought in 2006 to democratize academic research and to remove barriers to learning and knowledge sharing by founding the Center for E-Research and these goals were then achieved to an even greater extent in 2011 when John created the International Society for Studies in Oral Tradition as an online, universally accessible, and free of charge facility designed to create and maintain an open, democratic network for understanding the world's oral traditions, and of course as the general editor and founder of several book series, including the Albert Bates Lord Studies on Oral Tradition A Garland, The Voices in Performance, and Text Series, The Poetics of Orality, and Literacy Series and Notre Dame, since 2004 and numerous other edited volumes John Foley has been vigilant in creating every opportunity possible for exchange and in nourishing truly interdisciplinary dialogue. Perhaps nowhere is his generosity in providing opportunities for productive exchange more apparent than in his teaching. Joining the Department of English at the University of Missouri-Columbia in 1979, John Foley has gone on to influence students in numerous departments as he eventually was named as a professor of classical studies in 1991, an adjunct professor of anthropology in 1992, and a professor of Germanic and Slavic languages in 2003. His thoughtful mentorship has therefore enabled numerous undergraduate and graduate students in these various departments to reach beyond their established curricular boundaries and aggressively pursue research enhanced by multiple theoretical approaches and finely nuanced interdisciplinary insights. But his dedication to the exchange of ideas through teaching does not stop at his home institution. He has dedicated numerous summers to even more wide-reaching exchanges now leading workshops and summer schools in places as far-flung as Finland and China, but perhaps his most intensive efforts were those involved with his direction of six National Endowment of the Humanities Summer Seminars on Oral Traditional Literatures in 1987, 1989, 1991, 1992, 1994, and 1996. But whether at home or abroad, John Foley has always understood teaching and research to be inextricably connected, and even very early in his career he noted of teachers that it is the light of their learning that was kindled and burns yet within us. By conceiving of pedagogy and scholarship as dual aspects of a learning in the most essential meaning of the word, he has thus always inspired his students to maintain a commitment toward mutually nourishing teaching, research, and learning because we are doing what we believe in and contributing to a long and distinguished tradition, whatever individual roles fate prescribes for us. Throughout his career, John Foley has always acknowledged and celebrated the contributions of his own mentors, and those of the field more broadly, dedicating numerous volumes as tribute John Miles Foley and his teacher Albert Lord and his teacher's teacher Milman Parry made careers built on the work of comparison. The scholarship of Foley challenges the classicist skilled and sensitive to the subtleties of the heiress and the past contrafactual to look for parallels to Homeric epic in the singing of Bosnian villagers from interwar Yugoslavia. He challenges the Anglo-Saxonist, learned in the monastic culture of late first millennium England and potentially quite amenable to imagining the conviviality and orality of a Bosnian village. John Miles Foley, in 
In surveying the state of the art in contemporary studies of oral tradition, writes, while the orality versus literacy thesis originally helped to create a niche for oral traditions alongside literature, making room in the discussion of verbal art for something other than single-authored, freestanding, epitomized texts, we now confront a natural plethora of diverse phenomena that draw both from oral traditions and from texts, and it has become our responsibility to create a suitably flexible theory to understand this remarkable diversity. Medieval texts offer particular insights as works that have been composed, performed, received, and subsequently adapted in contexts that straddle any rigidly defined oral written divide. This is brought to you by The Praetorian, on both YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms, Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify. Support us on Patreon. Check out our Discord server too. All the links are in the description below. Thanks for stopping by. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.